Hi there, welcome to another episode of Mini Hacks Solved. My name is Jason and I am a developer advocate here at Slack. Today, I'll be walking through a mini hack that we showcased at Dreamforce 2023, where we had folks create an incident automation with the new workflow builder. But first, what are mini hacks? Mini hacks is an area at Trailblazer DX and at Dreamforce where developers and builders can challenge themselves by solving high level use cases. Participants are provided with steps and resources about a business problem, and they need to solve it using the given tools. Let's take a look at the requirements for the Create an Incident Automation with the new Workflow Builder mini hack. Let's start with this use case. At your company, you notice that there's a lot of repetitive steps that happen whenever an incident occurs. Creating a channel, inviting the right people, creating a Zoom room, etc. And now you've been assigned the task to create an automation to streamline the process. Since you heard about Slack workflows during Dreamforce, you've decided that Slack workflows are the best fit for this task. You also know that Workflow Builder is a no-code tool, so you can create workflows easily and quickly. But first, let's learn a little bit more about Workflow Builder and how it works. Workflow Builder is a tool that allows you to automate routine tasks within Slack through the use of workflows. A workflow is an automation that is built of a trigger and some number of steps. Let's start with triggers. Triggers are events that can be found in and outside of Slack that start a workflow. For example, when an emoji reaction is added to a message, a person joins a channel, or a workflow link is pressed. And steps are things like creating a channel, sending a message, or even connecting with a third-party service. Now that you have an idea of how workflows work, let's automate the process of creating incidents using Workflow Builder. Let's take a look at how this workflow will look once we're finished. First, you'll click on the Start Workflow button and this will bring up a form. Within this form, we'll fill out the required information about our incident, like the title and description. Once we submit the form, the magic starts. You'll see a message confirming that the workflow was run, and then a new channel will pop up in the left-hand sidebar with the name of the incident. Within this channel, there's already a buzz of activity. The right folks are being invited to the channel, and critical information that was gathered about the incident is already being posted automatically. You'll also see a Zoom room that folks can join to discuss details about the incident. So these are the steps behind your workflow at a glance. Seem like a lot of steps? Not to worry. Let's take advantage of a template that you have at your disposal built right into Workflow Builder. You can use or modify templates depending on your use case to get a head start. First, let's locate how to get to the Workflow Builder tool. Click on the workspace name in the top left corner and scroll down to Tools and select Workflow Builder. Once you do this, you'll see a new window pop up. From here, click Create Workflow and then expand the template sidebar by clicking See All Templates. Lastly, choose the incident response template. And with this, your foundation has been built. Now that you've created your template, let's take some time to peruse the steps and understand what the workflow is automating. During this process, we'll also look at where best we can add steps that we're missing from our final product. Since workflow links can live within a channel and a canvas, it's nice to notify the user that a workflow has been started with a visual cue. For this, let's add an only visible to you message also known as an ephemeral message, right after the form step. You'll need to hover your mouse between the steps Collect Info in a Form and Create Channel until you see a plus sign. Press the plus sign, choose Messages, and then send an only visible to you message from the right hand navigation. Here's where you can get creative and make the message make sense. You want to add details like incident title and short description which you can do by pressing the Incident Variable button in the bottom right. Also, let's send this message directly in the channel that the workflow was run, so the user knows right away that the workflow was run successfully. One of Workflow Builder's strongest points is its ability to hook into other services without the use of code. In this case, once the incident has occurred, you'll want to storm in one place and discuss the best path for moving forward. For this, you'll create a Zoom conference room. For this portion of the hack, we've used Zoom, but you could easily trade this out for Microsoft Team Calls or Google Meet. 
Once you have your account ready, find the Update the Channel Topic step and click the plus sign after it and choose Zoom and then create a meeting from the right hand navigation. Let's give the Zoom meeting title the same name as the instant and its short description should be the description of the instant as well. As for who to invite, that depends on your company's instant response team. Next, to make sure everyone knows which Zoom room discussion is taking place in, add the Zoom URL to the message that is posted in channel. Head to the send a message to a channel name and find the pencil icon on the top right corner. Within the message, let's add Zoom room and then insert a variable linking the Zoom join URL. And voila, you're done. Before our workflow can be used in the wild, we'll need to publish it first. In the top right corner of the Workflow Steps window, hit Publish. Copy the Workflow link by hitting the Copy Link button, and then choose one of the following places to post it. As a message within a channel. As a bookmark within a channel. Or within a canvas as part of a document. Once you've decided this, hit the Start Workflow button and watch the magic happen. After you've confirmed that everything is working, you're done. Thank you for watching this episode of Mini Hacks Solved. If you would like to read up a little bit more about Workflow Builder and how it can best help you in your work, take a look at the links below. And if you thought that this video was helpful, click like and subscribe for more Mini Hacks Solved videos in your feed. I'll see you in the next one.